I love Australian whiskey and I love Australian fortified wines. So I love when an Australian whiskey has been aged in Australian fortified wine barrels, which is what I have here. This is the Morris Whiskey Toke Barrel. Topa toke? Topaki. Topake? Semantics. We'll cover that later. Hey guys, I'm Nate Martin, the Whiskey Scribe. I'm a whiskey enthusiast and I love all things whiskey. But taste is subjective and there's a lot of different whiskies out there. So whether you consider yourself a connoisseur or you're just interested in knowing more about whiskey, let's explore it together. If you'd like to see more from me, consider subscribing. I put up new videos every week. You can also follow me over on Instagram. Now I'm really excited about this video because the Morris Whiskey team sent this out for me to review. It's their Toke Barrel. Now, there's a lot of interesting history about Morris Whiskey and how they got to this point. Let's take a quick journey back to 1859. This is when the Morris of Rutherglen Winery was established. It was in the gold rush years, and while many people were going out into the gold fields trying to find their fortune, but George F. Morris figured that he would do better if he sold wine to the miners. And this worked for him. By 1885, Morris Wines was the largest wine producer in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, in 1897, they sold one of their prize-winning horses and used the money to buy extra vineyards so that they could expand, which is the reason why the horse plays a prominent part in the Morris logo still today. Now later, an original 1830s hybrid copper pot column still was purchased by the distillery and installed in 1941. This was used for a couple of years, but for some reason it was abandoned and just left in storage. But in 2016, it was rediscovered reconditioned and put back into use making Australian single malt whiskey. The still was even given the name Aurora, naming it after the princess from Sleeping Beauty because they both lay dormant for several years. Now considering the popularity of whiskey aged in fortified wine casks and the issues that a lot of distilleries are having in trying to get their hands on those sorts of barrels these days, starting a distillery as part of a winery that's already known for producing award-winning fortified wines just makes damn good sense. They've released a sherry barrel whiskey, a musket, and even a smoked musket aged whiskey. And all of these have been well received and some have even won some international awards. So that's a quick version of how Morris ended up making whiskey. But there's still actually a little bit of a story to the Toke barrels. And if you're a fan of whiskey aged in fortified wine casks, stay with me because this is gonna be relevant for you. Now, a lot of fortified wines cannot be called by generic commonly used names for them unless they're from a specific region. So much like how Champagne can only be called Champagne if it's from the Champagne region of France. Champagne. Other than anywhere else, it's just called sparkling wine. Port can only be called Port if it's made in the Duro region of Portugal. Anywhere else in the world, it has to just be called Tawny. Sherry has to be made in the Andalusia region of Spain. Otherwise, you just can only call it a para. And Toque, which is a sweet white fortified wine, originally made in Hungary, that name's also protected by the EU. So if Australia makes Toque, they have to call it Topaki. Yeah, Topaki. Topake? Topaki. It's pronounced Topaki. But this is where there's an interesting loophole. Now, those protections on the wine names only protect the wine. So while the wine that comes out of the barrel has to be called tawny instead of port or a pear instead of sherry, the barrel itself, when you're putting whiskey in it, you can still actually refer to it as a port barrel or a sherry barrel, or in this case, a toque barrel. Anyway, it's time for a drink. Now I did get to try this one not too long ago. I attended the launch for it in Brisbane last week, so I already know that I like it. But I'm really looking forward to trying it again without as many distractions. So it's a 48% ABV whiskey, and it's been aged in a combination of American and European oak X wine casks, then finished in barrels that held Topaki for 15 years. So if we look at the color on this, it's got a beautiful amber, almost copper sort of tone to it. And if I swirl it around, the legs are really slow moving. And at the launch event, uh, Darren Peck, the head distiller, was there and he was talking about how they work really hard to make sure that 
The new make spirit that they get has got a lot of congeners. These are the kinds of oils that react with the wood to create some of those really fantastic flavors that come out in whiskey. So when you see legs like that, I always tend to get really, really hopeful. I know a lot of people like to discriminate against whiskies that have been aged in fortified wine casks, like it's focusing on the barrel and not the actual whiskey itself, but I get kind of an equal combination on my nose here of malt and that sweet sort of toffiness that comes from fortified wine. It's almost, it's almost kind of like shortbread with a little bit of honey over it, and I'm getting some of that beautiful musty scent that you get when you walk into a winery barrel room. There's a little bit of oak in there as well. There's something else, it's kind of butterscotch, but I think I'm getting some of the toasting from the wood. It's one of those whiskies where just on the nose, I'm really, really hesitant to drink it because I'm just enjoying that moment you get before you've actually tasted it. But I'm gonna press on. That oiliness in the whiskey, that you can see it even thicker now. So that oiliness instantly coats your mouth and that butterscotch, that little bit of faint hint of butterscotch that was on the nose, that's the first thing that's sort of gone around my mouth. It's kind of like this combination of toffee and butterscotch and it's just, it's coated everything and made it all the way through the palate. So that little bit of nuttiness that was on the nose, I think that's sort of coming across more like cocoa now. I can't work out if I would call it a, like a chocolate bean or a coffee bean. I suppose in that case you would just call it mocha. But yeah, there's this, there's this roasted sort of bean element in there. And it's interesting, there was more, there was more oak on the nose, but the sweetness of this kind of dominates a little bit more. And keep in mind that that sweetness, that's not overbearing, it's just, that sweetness carries across a lot of those other flavors, that butterscotch, that nuttiness, and it sort of just hides a little bit of that oak. I think if you were to water it down a little bit, you might get more of that oak characteristic. It's a really warming sensation of the chest too. I would say this is, you know what, it is winter. This is a fantastic whiskey for right now. You sort of get a little bit of those dark fruits, kind of like raisins. Not a lot of it though. I'd say that that sweetness is very much leaning more towards the butterscotch and the honey side of things, but there's just this faint little bit of not quite stewed, maybe dried dark fruits. And you know what, after tasting it, the nose still isn't, it's, it, the, the nose is still beautiful. And the finish sort of lingers. It's um, that oiliness sort of turns velvety and it just sticks around, but it's really, really nice. I love, like I always love whiskies of Venetia fortified wine cask, but sometimes, Sometimes they try to leave a little bit too much of the fortified wine in the cask so that you're leaning on that and then it sort of becomes a little bit more of like a whiskey fortified wine blend. But this is just perfectly balanced. You can tell with the way that this is still a whiskey with elements of the sweetness from the fortified wine sort of coming across, carried with those nutty characteristics, which I would assume is, is actually what's being carried across from the wood. I would call this a pretty well balanced whiskey and pretty proud to say it's Australian. That's definitely not going to disappoint. If you're somebody who likes whiskey that's aged in fortified wine casks, you're definitely going to love that. If you love your sherry bombs, if you love your your tawny aged whiskies, sorry, port aged whiskies, I would say you will enjoy that. If you're somebody who enjoys some of those, um, like the Starwood whiskies that have been aged in wine casks, it's not so abrupt on the fortified wine that it's going to push you away. If you do like those whiskies that have been aged in wine casks, this is still gonna be enjoyable for you. It might be a little bit more bold than what you're used to, but it's still really enjoyable. And I would say for single malt drinkers who usually prefer, you know, the people who consider themselves purists, who focus on that bourbon cask only because they feel like that best represents the spirit, this might be a little bit too sweet for you, but I would still say give it a try because there's enough of that malt, that malt from the pure whiskey coming across that you can still explore that. Yeah, just the fact that I'm getting that shortbread biscuity sort of note, that's, to me, that's what comes across from the malted barley. I think this has a little bit to please everyone, except for the peat drinkers. I'm not really getting any smoke in this, but you know, it's not a peated whiskey. It's, I'm, I'm not expecting peat. I should um, stop drinking that and actually keep making the rest of the video, shouldn't I? Now, I do also have a bottle of the Morris Topaki fortified wine. So this is the fortified wine that was in the barrels before the whiskey was finished in them. I have always wanted to taste a fortified wine that was in the barrel before the whiskey and have them side by side just to see what from here has made it across to here. So I will, in a later video, be trying these two side by side just to see how they move across. It's gonna be really fun for me. I've always wanted to do it. I've said it years ago. So if you wanna see that, hit subscribe. 
If you like this video, please give it a like. But for now, enjoy what's in your glass and slange. I was just impatient, I wanted to get back to drinking it at the end.